In this video, we're going to evaluate this line integral about two different curves. In each instance, we're starting at a point here where x is minus 1, 0, and then we're going to where x is 0 and y is 1. In the uh, first one that we'll do, we're going about a curve, and the curve is actually a circle, or one-fourth of a circle. So it'd be a circle with radius 1, and then we want to integrate it also along this line segment, going from minus 1, 0 to 0, 1. So let's consider the circle first. It looks like, let me see, we have x dy and y dx. If we used um, polar coordinates, let's see, x is equal to the radius, this is just 1, so it's the cosine of theta. We have to know dy and dx. Well, dx, that would just be minus the sine of theta, d theta. And y, it's the radius 1 times the sine of theta. And dy, that will be the cosine of theta d theta. So our integral becomes, now here x squared plus y squared, that's just the radius of the circle, which is 1. So here we don't even have to worry about that. Here we have x. That's the cosine of theta times dy. So we have cosine squared theta d theta minus y dx. This times this. This becomes plus sine squared theta d theta. Now here we are starting where theta equals pi, then we're proceeding here to where theta equals pi over 2. So the limit should be pi to pi over 2. And here we have sine square, cosine square plus sine square d theta. Of course, that's just going to be the integral of d theta pi to pi over 2, so that's just going to be theta. So that equals pi over 2 minus pi equals minus pi over 2. So that's the answer that we get. Now, let's consider when we evaluate the same integral, well then now we're going to have the line segment. So let's see what kind of an answer that gives us. Remember here, going about the circle, it is minus pi divided by 2. Okay, now we have this line segment. And let's see, what will be an equation for it? General equation for a straight line, of course, is y equals mx plus b. The slope of this, we go over 1, go up 1. So the slope is 1. So y equals x. And the slope intercept b, when x is 0, y is 1. So this is the equation for the line segment. Now we have the expression x dy, but here we luck out because dy, that's just dx. So here we could say x dx minus y, y is this, times dx. 
So it looks like we can express everything in terms of x and dx. So let's see if we can proceed with that then. Here we have integral x. Let's make some room. x dy, but y is the same as dx, so we can put dx here minus y, that's this, x plus 1, dx, divided by x squared plus y squared, which is this, x plus 1 squared. Now x is going from minus 1 to 0. So our limits will be minus 1 to 0. So it's shaping up to be that kind of an integral expression. OK, um, let's see what's in the top. We have x dx, and then we have minus x dx. So those cancel. So we're just going to have minus dx. So this will equal minus integral from minus 1 to 0. In the numerator, it is just dx. And now down here, this will give us x squared plus 2x plus 1. And here we have an x squared. So I have 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. So here we have to integrate a quadratic expression. Usually uh, the procedure is um, try to express this using completion of the square. And if we're lucky, it will come out in a form that would be amenable to uh, some sort of trig substitution. So let's just look at this. We have 2 times x squared plus x, we're going to factor out the 2, plus 1 half. Now let's just think about this portion. If we had, say, x plus 1 half squared, what would that give us? Say we had x plus 1 half if we square this that will be x squared plus x plus 1 fourth. So we have this plus 1 fourth here this should give us this. Let's make certain. x squared plus x plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. That gives us that expression. So this we can replace with 2 times this quantity. So we're going to write this in place of this. So let's do that and see where that leads us. Obviously it was a whole lot easier working with the first curve. But here we have dx divided by 2 times x plus 1 half squared plus one-fourth. Okay, now x plus one-half squared. Would it be useful to try a substitution here? If we just, if we call this u, let's try it with that first, say let u equal x plus one-half. Let u equal x 
equal x plus one half du would just be dx. So there's no change there. So we could write the integral like this minus dx, that's the same as du. Two times now that is u squared now, so we have u squared plus one fourth. And we'll have new limits. We'll worry about those later. Let's just worry about integrating this. Because I think this is starting to take shape now. Um, let's see, for basic trig identities we have sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. I don't know if that's going to help us here. Um, the other basic one, how about tangent squared theta? I think this is the one that we want. Tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. So here we have a variable plus a constant. Here we have a variable plus a constant. I think what we have to do is factor the one-fourth out of this so that we have a plus one here. So u squared plus one-fourth. Factor a one-fourth out of that. We have one-fourth. We'll have four u squared plus one. So this is this times two. That's two-fourths. That's one-half. So we'll have down here in the denominator, we have it like this now. That's our new denominator. So let's write that in. We have one half times four u squared plus one. Now, if we say let 2u equal the tangent of theta. That's how I think we're going to set that up. Let 2u be equal to the tangent of theta. In other words, the square root of this. 2u equal the tangent of theta. We're keeping things in focus here. Okay. Now, because we have it like this, then we have tangent squared theta to u, that'll be the tangent squared theta plus one. That's what we want for there. But if we make that substitution, then we're going to have two times du will equal, that's the secant squared theta, d theta. So du will equal one half of this. So here then, this will come out to be equal to, and we still have limits to consider, minus the integral du, that's this, one half secant squared theta d theta. Here we have one half times 4u squared tangent squared theta. Plus 1. Okay, these cancel. Tangent squared theta plus 1, that's the secant squared theta. These cancel. So we have minus integral of d theta. So equals the minus sign out here. Integral of d theta. We haven't messed around with our limits yet, but we will. And that will equal a minus sign times theta. Now, what is theta? We go back to here. Theta will be the inverse tangent of 2 times u. So now our integral comes out to be equals minus. Theta is the inverse tangent of 2u. 
from our substitution. So we have the inverse tangent of 2 times u. But u itself was a substitution. It was x plus 1 half. So for u, we can write in x plus 1 half. Or that will be 2x plus 1. So I have a minus sign here. Inverse tangent of 2x plus 1. Now we have to go back to here. Our limits on x, x was going from minus 1 to 0. So here we have x goes minus 1 to 0. So now we have, this will equal, we have this minus sign out here. Okay, x is 0. That's the inverse tangent of 1. Then we're going to have minus, x is minus 1. That's negative 2 plus 1. That's negative 1. So we have the inverse tangent of negative 1. Well, we know, or should know anyway, that the inverse tangent of 1, that's pi over 4. So let's see, we have minus equals minus. That's pi over 4, 45 degrees. Then we have minus negative 1. That would be going down, so that should be minus 45 degrees, or that would be minus pi over 4. That would be pi over 4 plus pi over 4. That's 2 pi over 4. So this right in here is just pi over 2, but it has a minus sign. So our final answer is minus pi over 2. And that is what we got when we integrated, consider this line integral over the circular curve. Each case, it gives us the same expression. So for this type of setup, the only thing that matters is the endpoints. The path that we take to the endpoints is irrelevant. And this is, um, well, the question is, is there a test? Is there a way that we can find out if we have a line integral? Will it depend upon the path that we take between two endpoints, or will it be independent of the path that we take between the two endpoints? And this gets into whether we have a conservative or non-conservative field, and that we will tackle in the uh, the next uh, video. But anyway, here are some more examples of. Uh, some line integral problems. The first one was pretty easy. The second one was a little bit more complicated, but that's because we had a more complicated um, integral to deal with. Um, anyway, the playlist for all of these videos in the vector analysis series is at the website digital-university.org.